Hi loves, I'm here with the beautiful Melissa Ambrosini and we are going to talk all the things birth, her amazing experience, what she's doing this incredible course and I'm just so excited to have you here on Awakening with Ali. So Melissa, thanks so much for being here, love. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I'm so honored to have you. So tell me, you know, obviously most know a little bit about you and your journey from following on social, but if they don't know you or a little bit about you, can you give a little bit about yourself and let's get into this incredible course and why you felt so called to create this and, and, and have this support out there? Yeah, so this course, Holy Mama, was born out of my own experience and my own journey. Um, I met my husband in 2013 and knew that I wanted to marry him and wanted to have his babies straight away. And I Love just it. knew it straight away. <laughs> I just knew. And before that, I'd said I didn't want to get married and I didn't want to have babies. And um, so that was a big shock. Like when I met him, I was like, yes, yes to marriage and yes to babies. And so we began our conscious conception journey. Then we went to a naturopath. We did all of the tests. We started priming our body and getting our body um, in peak health for conception. Um, but we knew that having a baby was not in the immediate future. And uh, we just were building our careers and it wasn't um, time for us then. And so we kept on priming our bodies and I read every book that I could get my hands on, mm. on, con on conception and birth and pregnancy and empowered birthing and conscious parenting. I became obsessed. I listened to podcasts. I read the books. I went to the workshops. I was obsessed. I had piles and piles of books beside my bed. Um, and, and my friends and husband would joke that I was the most well-educated non-pregnant woman that they'd <laughs> ever met. Um, because I was so fascinated. I was studying um, physiological birth and I was just so hungry for the knowledge and so fascinated and couldn't believe that we weren't actually taught this stuff in school. Mm -hmm. And so I dove head first into it. And from 2013 for six years, um, that was my life. I was studying it like a PhD and then October uh, 2018 came around and I woke up one morning, I rolled over to my husband and I said, I'm ready. And he was like, just like that. And I said, just like that, that maternal switch was just flicked on within me. And we decided to wait till January, 2019, because we were doing some detoxing and things like that. And so we, got to January 2019 and we had a beautiful ceremony and meditation and, you know, really set the stage and um, had a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. And we didn't get pregnant that month. And I was so shocked. I thought, how could this be? I've been prepping my body and my mind for seven years almost. How has this not happened? And then it didn't happen the month after that and the month after that and the month after that. And I was so perplexed and every month my heart would break because that yearning to be a mother was so strong. I just wanted to be a mother. Every cell in my body wanted to be a mama. Oh. And so, yeah, it was really, really challenging. It was so hard. I cried. It, I wailed every time I would Aww. get my period and, well, and, and you were so my... conscious, like you said, you know, like, I think so many women have that yearning, but I think especially because of what you spoke to with your consciousness and really that conscious conception probably added so many more layers emotionally, spiritually, mentally, like I, I could only imagine. Totally. And every month my heart would just break and I would cry and it would just feel like it was being ripped out of my chest. And I lived my life in two week increments, either two weeks to ovulate, like waiting two weeks to ovulate and then waiting two weeks to find out. And so I lived my life like that for 18 months. Wow. And it was the hardest, most challenging 18 months of my life. And I know some women, it's a lot longer. I know mm. that, but it's still hard. It yeah. was so hard for me. And one of the hardest things I've ever been through in my life. 
but I did so much work physically because there was a, a time where I was just like, okay, what's wrong with my body? What's wrong with my body? What, why can my body not do this? Like, this is the most natural thing in the world. Why can my body not do it? So I went through that phase and then I real, then I did all of the tests and there was nothing wrong with my body. Okay. Um, that's when I knew it was a spiritual assignment for me. It was an assignment in letting go of control and surrendering and trust. And isn't that motherhood? <laughs> totally, totally. And so my baby girl was teaching me these lessons from then. And so, yeah, the 18 months was an up and down roller coaster, uh, you know, emotional ride. And then when we did conceive, it was obviously one of the best days of my life. Oh. And uh, when we found out, sorry. And um, since November 2013, when I met my husband, I've been taking notes on everything that I did, everything that I've learned about oh, conscious wow. conception, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, conscious parent. I've been taking notes. And then I have a top rated podcast. So I've interviewed the world's best experts, doctors, scientists, New York Times bestsellers on these topics. And I have put it all into the Holy Mama program, which is me obviously teaching on those four main pillars, conscious conception, pregnancy, birth and postpartum, and then conscious parenting, which mm -hmm. are the four main areas. And I have 19 of the world's best experts inside the program as well so and it's cool. open right now and the doors close november 4th so i am just so excited to have this program out into the world and to be able to share it and to create holy mamas all over the world because a holy mama is an empowered woman and a woman who integrates the body the mind and the spirit into everything that she does and when there is an empowered mama, we raise empowered children. Mm -hmm. And those children are the game changers. Like our children are powerful light beams. Like they are full on game changers, these ones oh, yeah. that are coming yeah, they're, through. They're, now. they're light workers coming in. They're they are everything. I agree with you. Yeah. I mean, I have, you know, four and two year old, and now I just had my first son on September eleventh last month and my first home birth with him and I completely agree with you like there is such an empowering you know feeling to everything and especially for me like I went through I had a c-section with my first daughter pretty traumatic birth wasn't empowered wasn't really educated just kind of went along because I was a new mom you know and so it was quite a traumatic birth and then my second daughter I had a VBAC vaginal birth after a c-section after in the hospital and then this time around my son I really empowered myself. I wish I, your course was around when I was, uh, you know, having him because I was doing so much research and like, I can do this. I can have my home birth. I can be empowered. And I totally understand when you say that surrender, I feel like that was the theme of this pregnancy to the birth the entire way through. Like, it was just like, learn how to surrender, learn how to let go. Cause I had prodromal labor, even when I was birthing him, like there was a moment where it was like, let go. Like there was just so much of that. So I love what you shared because I think mama's really in mama's to be really need to like understand that at the core like what you speak to it like especially those pillars it's not one it's not the other it's everything all together yes absolutely and this is why i created the program to really help women feel empowered in every step of their motherhood journey from the conception, from the birth, to the pregnancy, sorry, to the birth, to the postpartum, to the parenting. I want them to feel empowered through the whole process. Yeah. Because it will radically change their mothering experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you're 100% right. Anyone who is, you know, listening or watching, I mean, it, it's so important. I and mean, even for me, when I went through with my first daughter, pretty heavy postpartum depression, which most of my community knows. And I was not in an empowered place. I was in a very disempowered place. I was very lost. I was very dark. And when I came to the other side and found light in the tunnel and then, you know, had my second daughter, it was such a different place to be empowered and feel like I could trust myself. I could trust my intuition. I could trust what I was doing. I didn't have to listen to the noise around me. So having a course like this of a holy mama, being able to tap into 
all those experts, all these real life experiences, real sharing, you know, all of that in that vulnerable space. It's so needed. I think especially for mothers right now that are really birthing these beautiful, like you said, like beings, light workers, like truly these game changers who are coming into the world to shake everything and shift everything. Like we need to be in that conscious space. We need to be so empowered because motherhood is hard. It's beautiful, but it's hard. Yes, it's big. It's not easy and you need to support yourself. You need to take care of yourself and have your support systems in place because the mama is the heartbeat of the home. And if we aren't thriving, nothing works. So true. (laughs) If we're not thriving, the wheels fall off. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important that we master our mean girl who says, we're not worthy of taking time for ourselves. Get over that, get over the guilt and fill yourself up and make sure that you are happy and healthy and thriving because you will be a better mama when you are. Yeah, I love that. So it's so powerfully said. You know, I'm interested with you, Melissa, like obviously, you know, you, like you said, you've had so many experts on her amazing podcast, you know, you've studied all this, you've done so much work and then you obviously implement it in your everyday life now as a mama. What does that look like for you? And I'm sure obviously every day is different, but what would you share, you know, now that you've been in the motherhood journey for a moment as your little girl, like, what is it like for you, you know, being in this space and then getting to implement the things that you're sharing, you know, with my audience as well as in Holy Mama? Yes, it's so important. And we talk about self-care through all of the phases because it is important through all the phases. Um, So I love this question. What does it look like for me now? I have a one and a half year old and I have a 16 year old bonus son. Oh, wow. Um, So I have a 16 year old bonus little man. Well, he's like a young man now. Mm -hmm. And um, my little daughter, who's one and a half. And so for me, it's very important that I take time to fill myself up first thing in the morning. So she gets up at around seven and I wake up earlier. So it actually starts the night before I go to bed when she goes to bed. Okay. Right. So she goes to bed at like seven or I go and I go to bed too. I'm not staying up scrolling Instagram. I'm not staying up, you know, late, late, late. Um, Of course, there's times where, you know, I do stay up a bit later, but it's like 830. Right. So I'm talking (laughs) like 830. I'm not talking midnight. Um, So yeah, it's about going to bed early, filling myself up because I know when I am rested, I am a much nicer human being, Mm -hmm. right? I'm a much better mom. (laughs) So um, I go to bed early. So then I wake up early. I wake like this morning, I woke up at four. I went to bed at eight. I woke up at four. I can meditate. I can exercise. I can do my journaling. I can do whatever I want. So that time before seven is just for me. So I wake up sometimes in the fours, sometimes in the fives. I don't, I just let my body wake when it wants to wake. But this morning I woke up at four and I did my meditation and I did my workout. Um, I put some washing on. I did some things around the house. Um, I did a little bit of work actually, which I don't usually do. Okay. This is something that I don't usually do, but if I have, if I've done my meditation, if I have moved my body, if I've done some journaling, if I've done some reading and like, I've got time before she's up, I will do a bit of work. Um, but pre baby, I would never have done that. I would have just waited until I start my work day. But then when she's up at seven, like I'm in mum mode. So um, I fill myself up, you know, in the in the morning, and then I'm in mum mode. And um, I go to the beach with her in the middle of the day. And again, that's for me as well as it is for mm-hmm. her. Um, going to the beach, getting some sun on us and swimming. And we just love that. And then um, she has a sleep. She has one day sleep. So she has a sleep, which she's asleep right now. (laughs) And this in the afternoons. um, So I do some work while she sleeps. And then in the afternoons, again, we're out in nature. Um, So again, like that's for me as much as it is for her too. So we love being outside. We are outside as much as possible. We're only inside when it's raining. Mm-hmm. Um, we love being outside. So we'll go for walks. We'll go to the beach. We'll go to the park. 
we'll just hang around outside in our garden like we're just constantly playing outside as much as possible so that fills me up too Mm -hmm. and then um yeah and then we have dinner and then again I go to bed early so like they're the things you know whether you implement it first thing in the morning which I highly recommend because then you go into your day full you go into your day topped up so you know, whatever time you're, if you have three kids, whatever time the earliest one usually wakes up, get up 15 minutes earlier and just do some deep breathing or some meditation, but get up before them so that you have that time for yourself first thing in the morning. Um, That's what I do. And that really, really works for me. And then there's some mornings where, um, you know, it may not happen. Like this is very, very rare. Um, but I still make sure I'll at least do one thing for myself. Um, and that might be, oh, I love, um, I forgot to mention this. I do Abhyanga, which is an Ayurvedic full body um, oil massage where I do affirmations and say, I love you and thank you to my body. Um, so I do that every morning as well. And I love that. Like that oh, really to me awesome. is just luxury. Like oiling my body is just pure heaven for me. I hear that. I, I'm constantly like putting like beautiful essential oils with my coconut oil and, and lathering myself up. I was doing that all through my pregnancy, especially at the end when I was feeling so like more, you know, stressed and I was having to let go because it was just like, you know, one of those where it's like prodromal labor and then your baby's not coming. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with my body? And so like, I totally get that. I was doing that with the oils and like getting myself to feel good and relax. And I love that you shared that. And I also love that you really emphasize like that self-love, self-care and staying, you know, getting yourself up to, to do so. I'm curious for you, because I'm pretty sure you 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 nursed your daughter, right? I remember like, following your journey um, with nursing, right? So when, when that was happening in the beginning, like beginning, beginning, right after you had her, what did you do to be able to like, you know, fulfill that same like cup? Because obviously it looked a little different, right? Like as far as, you know, having like to nurse and wake up maybe in the middle of the night or early mornings, like did that change the way you operated that schedule when you first kind of came into motherhood? Yeah, definitely. So I, okay, there's two things that I did here and I talk about this in Holy Mama. So in, when we gave birth, we did the 40 day lying in period, the beautiful postpartum 40 day lying in, which I talk about in the program. I teach you how to set yourself up for a beautiful, blissful fourth trimester, which I'm very passionate about because that fourth trimester is so important for bonding and also for healing right? And in Ayurveda, they say 42 days for the next 42 years. So however, how you spend your 42 days after birth will set you up for the next 42 years of your life. So the more love, the more nourishing, the more slow, the more care, the more self-love that you can give to yourself in those 40 days post-birth, that is going to set you up for the next 42 years of your life, right? And so I set myself up I planned for my postpartum all through my pregnancy. I had the most beautiful 40 days lying in. It was just heaven. It was like a retreat, a retreat. And I gave myself full permission to let go of all of my practices. I gave myself permission to let go of meditation. I gave myself permission to let go of movement, Mm. which were two things that I'm so dedicated to doing every single day, journaling and all of those things. And I just gave myself permission. And also in my pregnancy as well, I gave myself permission to, you know, I'd come from an over-exercising background Mm -hmm. where there was a lot of over-exercising and things like that. Um, I used to be a professional dancer. And so for me, I came from that. And so when I got pregnant, I really just allowed myself to not do anything if I didn't want to Um, in in terms of movement, Mm -hmm. even though I know how good it is for me, I just was like, okay, if you just want to walk and do a prenatal Pilates class, then that's that's perfect. I just gave myself permission. And so postpartum, I gave myself permission to let go of all of my structure because I am a very organized, structured, type A Aries generator (laughs) who's like an overachiever and very disciplined. And so I just let everything go. And I just wanted to be guided by her. 
right? And it's really interesting reflecting back. Um, there are still things that I did for myself without even knowing it, right? Mm. So setting myself up for the postpartum, that is self-love. That is, that is pure self-love. So I had meals being delivered to my door every day for 40 days. I had my mother-in-law come over and sit with Bambi while she slept in the bed so I could have a bath. Yeah. So I was in the, like, she was in my bedroom. I was in my bath having a sits bath and she was right there. So I, I asked for that. Um, so I did that. I slept when she slept. I, another thing that I did was I cleared my calendar. There was no commitments. There was no social commitments. There was no podcast interviews. There was nothing. I cleared my calendar for that entire time. I said no to everything, to best friends' birthdays. I just said I am, I had it in my calendar, 40 day lying in period. That's what wow. I called it. So no one could book any meetings in. My team couldn't book any meetings in. My husband couldn't book anything in because so it was blocked out. The entire 40, to, 40 days was blocked out for me in my calendar. That is self-love. And yeah, so <laughs> totally, it was a commitment. And, you know, I would meditate when she was breastfeeding. I was going to say that's what I do. Time. <laughs> What's that? That's what I do. I love that you said that. I, that's what I do currently. I, I meditate while I'm nursing. Yeah. So like I would sit in the chair and I would close my eyes and I would meditate. And sometimes I wouldn't. Sometimes my meditation was staring down at her. That was my meditation. And so I just allowed myself to just let go of that and just be in the present moment for those 42 days. And it was the most beautiful and blissful time of my life. And I will look back on that forever and just be so grateful for those those days with my husband and my daughter. And it was just so beautiful. And we were yeah, so supported it. by our community. It was It was heaven and every woman deserves that. Yeah, I love that. That's amazing. I love I love that you call the lying in and, and just giving yourself that time because I think we're so rushed back to society, right? Like, okay, had the baby, time to get back to work, time to go do this, time to do that. And I I really tried this time. I gave myself about four weeks, more than I gave myself with the girls of like really not doing anything and just resting and healing and relaxing. And even that for me was so, I was like, wow, this is such a different feeling than when I rushed back into work after having my girls and like really just being in it with my son and honoring my body and honoring that postpartum, as you said, in that beautiful season. So I love that you took it so much further and have that in Holy Mama for moms to know like that is something you absolutely should ask for and allow yourself to step into and let go of whatever you need to let go of. And I just think that's amazing and so magical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was beautiful. I will hold those memories of that time forever in my heart. It was just so beautiful. It was just, we were in a bubble, my husband and Bambi and I, and I know like some people, you know, do need to go back to work for financial reasons, but there are still things that you can do um, to support yourself, you know, call on your friends and your family and your community to support you. Um, and there's so many different creative things that you can do to get that support. Yeah, I think it's great you speak to support too, because I think when I first had Amelia, you know, four and a half years ago, I didn't think I should ask for support. I felt very like I had to do everything on my own. It was a very pride space to be. And it ended up just destroying me because I didn't ask for help and I fell into postpartum depression. And so I love that you speak to like, no matter what your situation looks like, you need to call on your village, you need to have support, whether it is that you're doing what you're doing with the lying in or you're going back to work and you're still needing some type of support to help you move through. It's like every woman needs that and deserves that. So I just love that you emphasize that. So I know speaking of real mom life, we both have to wrap up uh, things here soon. <laughs> um, before I let you go, is there anything else that you would want to share about your journey or Holy Mama? And of course, everything will be in the show notes, but will you just tell us where we can um, get Holy Mama before it closes and anything else that you know you want to share? Yes. So you can head to holymama.com and that's spelt W-H-O-L-Y-M-A-M-A.com. And it's only open between now and November 4th. And if you want to consciously conceive, if you want to have 
a blissful pregnancy, an empowered birth and postpartum and learn about conscious parenting, this program is for you. And even if you don't want to have babies for five years, get this now and you will get so much out of the conscious conception prep phase. Um, so if motherhood is one day on your cards, get the program now. If you have finished having your babies and you want to learn about conscious parenting down the other end of the scale, you will get so much out of this program. And if you have daughters, you know, get it for them, even if they're in their late teens, early twenties, get this for them because it teaches them how to love their body, how to understand um, about tracking their cycle. And it all starts there. You know, it all starts yeah. loving your body. It starts with tracking your cycle, understanding your body and respecting your body. That's where it all starts. So yeah, get it for your daughters um, and come and join us before November 4th, Australian time. That's November 3rd in America and it's holymama.com. And if you have any other questions about it, just come and send me a message on Instagram at Melissa Ambrosini and I would be happy to answer any. Amazing. And that'll all be in the show notes, guys, for her social and of course the Holy Mama website to grab the course. Thank you, Melissa, so much for being here and sharing a little bit of your journey and your beautiful just the way you've stepped into motherhood, honestly, I've been following you for years and watched you evolve and, and shift and everything you've gone through. And I just think it's so beautiful to see how much you embody as a mother and how much you share and empower others. So thank you. Oh, that's so beautiful to hear. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you, everyone. Love, light and blessings. Everything will be in the show notes.